Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we will learn to carry out mixed design of concrete by DOE method. By mixed design, we mean to calculate the weights of cement, water, fine and coarse aggregates per meter cube of concrete. Let's get started. The mixed design can be carried out in eight steps, which can be seen in the screen. In step one, you determine the target mean strength, FT which is higher than the characteristic strength. In step two, you determine the water-cement ratio and check it with the maximum value. In step three, you determine the water content, W. In step four, using the water-cement ratio and water content, you determine the cement content, C, and check it with the minimum value. In step five, you determine the total aggregate content, which is nothing but the sum of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate CA and FA. In step six, you determine the proportion of fine aggregate, that is, the ratio of fine aggregates to the total aggregates. Using results of step five and six, in step seven, you determine the fine aggregate content FA and coarse aggregate content CA. At last, in step eight, you perform necessary corrections for the free moisture content and water absorption for both fine and coarse aggregates. Step eight is performed only if the problem provides the water absorption and moisture content data for the aggregates. To understand how each step is performed, let's solve a problem using these steps. You can see the problem on your screen. First of all, it is important to identify that whether the question is providing the characteristic strength or the target strength. If question mentions values such as M20, M35, M40, etc., then the value after M indicates the characteristic strength of concrete in MPA. For example, if question asks to carry out mixed design, for M20, then characteristic strength will be 20 megapascals. In our case, question directly gives the targeted strength FT. The maximum size of aggregate is 20 millimeters and the aggregate type is uncrushed. Workability is given in terms of slump and the slump value is required to be in the range of 10 to 30 millimeters. The specific gravity of aggregates is given to be to 0 0.65. If it wasn't specified, we would have assumed it to be 2.6 for uncrushed aggregates and to 0 0.7 for crushed aggregates. The exposure condition for the concrete is given to be moderate. This extra piece of information is given just to help you decide whether the concrete is PCC without rebars or RCC with rebars. Here, the term reinforcement makes it clear that it is reinforced concrete. Let's solve the problem step by step. The first step is to determine the target mean strength, which can be calculated by using the formula FT equals FCK plus K times sigma, where K is equal to 1.65 and sigma is standard deviation and depends upon the grade of concrete. The value of sigma is equal to 4 for M20 and M25. For lower grades than M20, sigma is equal to 3.5. And for higher grades than M25, sigma is equal to 5. However, in our case, we are directly given the value of target strength. Hence F, T equals 45 MPA. In step two, we calculate the water-cement ratio from the table and graph shown and compare the water-cement ratio with the maximum value. The table gives the compressive strength of concrete for various cement types and aggregate types. Note that these values are for a water-cement ratio of 0 0.5. Draw a vertical line at value 0 0.5 on the axis of water-cement ratio. That is the x-axis. Since no information is given about cement type, let's assume it to be ordinary Portland cement OPC. 
You can see that. For OPC and uncrushed aggregate, the 28 days compressive strength is 40 to MPA. At 42 MPA on the y-axis, draw a horizontal line to cut the vertical line drawn earlier. Now draw a curve passing through the point of intersection and parallel to the curve closest to that point. This curve is your reference curve. Now we will use this curve to determine the water cement ratio based on the target strength. Choose the value of target strength on the y-axis that is 45 MPA. Draw a horizontal line to meet the reference curve. Draw a vertical line from the intersection point on the reference curve to meet the x-axis. This point on the x-axis gives the value of the water cement ratio, which is approximately 0 0.47. This value, that is 0 0.47, needs to be checked with the maximum value of water cement ratio. By question, the exposure condition is known to be moderate. For reinforced concrete, the maximum free water cement ratio for moderate exposure condition turns out to be 0 0.5, which is the maximum value of water cement ratio. Hence, a value of water cement ratio, that is 0 0.47, is okay. Or we can say that we have to choose the lower value of the two water cement ratios. Since lower the water cement ratio, better the strength. In step three, we determine the water content W. That is the weight of the water in one meter cube of concrete. For max aggregate size 20 millimeters, an aggregate type uncrushed. And for slump value 10 to 30 millimeters, we get the water content to be 160 kg per meter cube. Step 5, we know water cement ratio is equal to the ratio of water content to the cement content. Since now, we know the water cement ratio and water content, we can determine the cement content. The cement content sheet comes out to be 340 point for kg per meter cube. This value needs to be checked with the minimum cement content. For moderate exposure condition, and for reinforced concrete, the minimum cement content comes out to be 300 kg per meter cube. Cement content calculated earlier that is 340.4 kg per meter cube is higher than 300 kg per meter cube. Hence C equals 340.4 kg per meter cube. In simple terms, higher of the two values is chosen. Since higher the cement content, greater is the strength of concrete. In step four, the total aggregate content that is, the sum of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate content is determined. The numbers at the ends of the inclined lines indicate the specific gravity of aggregate. If the question doesn't provide the specific gravity of aggregates, we assume it to be 2.6 for uncrushed aggregates and 2.7 for crushed aggregates. In this problem, the specific gravity of aggregates is given to be the 0.65. Mark 2.65 on the figure and draw a line parallel to the closest line in the figure. At water content 160 kg per meter cube, draw a vertical line. From the point of intersection, draw a horizontal line to meet the y-axis. And note the value, which is approximately 2,440 in our case. This value turned as wet density of concrete is nothing but the mass of concrete per one meter cube of volume. Now, for one meter cube of concrete, we have total mass of concrete, mass of water, and mass of cement. Subtracting the mass of cement and water from the total mass of concrete, the mass of the total aggregates can be determined, which comes out to be 1939.6 kg per meter cube. Now that we have determined the total aggregate content, let's determine what fraction of the total aggregates is fine aggregates. For determining the proportion of fine aggregates, that is fine aggregate by total aggregate, there are three figures. 
and the choice of figure depends upon the maximum size of aggregates, which is 20 millimeters in our case. Hence, we choose the second figure. In this figure itself, there are three diagrams. The choice of the diagram depending upon the workability of the concrete. By question, the workability in terms of slump is 10 to 30 millimeters, hence choose the middle diagram. The numbers at the ends of the lines represent the percentage of the fine aggregates passing through the 600 micrometer sieve. This information is usually given in the question, and in our case the percentage of fine aggregate passing through 600 micrometer sieve is 50%. Mark 50% between 40% and 60% and draw a line in between them passing through the 50%. Now choose the water cement ratio that is 0 0.47 on the x axis and draw a vertical line to meet the 50% line. Now draw a horizontal line from that point to meet the y axis. Each unit on the y axis is equal to 10 points which can be seen from the y-axis on the leftmost side. The intercepted value on the y-axis, which is approximately 31, is the percentage of fine aggregate. Hence, 31 divided by 100, that is 0 0.31, is the fraction of the fine aggregates. We have determined the ratio of fine aggregate to total aggregate, and we also know the total aggregate content. Multiplying the two, we can determine the fine aggregate content Fa, which comes out to be 601.3 kg per meter cube. We also know that the total aggregate is the sum of fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. Using this relation, we can determine the coarse aggregate content Ca, that comes out to be 1338.3 kg per meter cube. So far, we have calculated the mass of water, cement, fine aggregates, and coarse aggregates. Let's represent these values in proportion. Let's divide each term with the mass of cement. Hence, we obtain the proportion to be 1, 1 1.766, 3.931. In step 8, which is also the last step, we make necessary corrections in the contents calculated till now. The calculations made so far are based on the assumption that the aggregates are in SSD condition. Saturated surface dry condition means that the aggregate has absorbed water to saturation, but its surface is kept dry. You can clearly see the differences between SSD condition and oven dry and wet conditions from the figures. In actual mixed design, the aggregates are merely in SSD condition. They either have tendencies to absorb water or they contain free moisture. For other cases than SSD, certain corrections are to be applied to the water content and aggregate contents. Water absorption for an aggregate indicates that. It requires extra amount of water to reach to the SSD condition. Similarly, free moisture content for an aggregate indicates that it already contains certain amount of water higher than required for the SSD condition. It means that in order to determine the corrected water content, we need to add the water absorption values demanded by the aggregates and subtract the free moisture content already present in the aggregates. Similarly, in order to determine the corrected values for aggregates, water absorption needs to be subtracted and free moisture content needs to be added. Let's clear our understanding by solving a problem involving such corrections. As we can see, the question specifies the water absorption and moisture content values for the fine and coarse aggregates. The fine aggregates have a free moisture content of 1.5%, indicating that they already contain water equivalent to 1.5% of their own weight. Similarly, the coarse aggregates have a water absorption of 1%, meaning they will absorb water equal to 1% of their own weight from the mix. Now let's apply the corrections to the water content and aggregate contents calculated earlier. 
in the water content, add the water absorption, and subtract the free moisture content of both coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. Nil indicates zero value for water absorption or free moisture content. Similarly, subtract water absorption and add free moisture content to the coarse and fine aggregates respectively. It is important to note that while finding the corrected water content, water absorption and free moisture content of both coarse and fine aggregates are to be used. But while finding the corrected coarse aggregate content, only water absorption and free moisture content of only coarse aggregate is used. Same goes for corrected fine aggregate content. Also note that the values for the aggregates are just opposite in sign than the values for the water content. Now note down the corrected values of water content, coarse aggregate and fine aggregate, and determine the proportion of cement content, fine aggregate content and coarse aggregate content. As done earlier in step 7, by dividing all the contents by the cement content. In this way, you obtain the corrected mix. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. And make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more such content. See you in the next video.